Hey friend, here we are again. Mm. I really want to share with you what's been present for me uh, lately. Some experiences I've had and some process I've been on. I think this might be inspiring to you if you find yourself in similar positions and similar doubting. Because lately, as usual, I have been divinely guided. Divinely guided to different experiences, to absolutely magical things happening in my life, to magical friends. Um, I have also been guiding to start this Kirtan band with some Bali family I have here. And wow, this is such a joy in my life right now. And on this path that I'm on, that I think you understand now, I'm on this conscious path of devotion to life, to the divine and the divine within me, within all of us. And I'm walking on this path very consciously, very willingly, you know, very curiously to just go deeper, answer all the highest callings, free myself, understand even more feel deeply and lately um yeah i've been having some different experiences i'm not sure how or where to start but i'm just gonna try and make it very clear to you mm. so lately i've been going going back between my path devotional self my divine self if we might say and my little self the three dimension realm with physicality and all the injunctions the definitions all the judgments all the stories i might have had in the past in the present and i keep seeing myself going back it's more like an up and down i am up up in the magical realm, if you might say, up in the energy, the five-dimensional point of view, the five-dimensional feeling of life and reality. And everything there is so blissful. It's so potent, ease, magic. It makes sense. It's natural. There is no constriction, contraction, contraction. It's just beautiful, graceful, flying. And then I find myself coming back down into the only three-dimensional physical ego self, fears, doubts, making choices that I'm not really 100% aligned with just because of my own expectations, judgments, fears, conditioning, stories. And I've been finding myself go up and down between those two dimensions. It's like this weird, ungraceful dance between the little self and the higher self. Um, and I've been feeling extremely unclear. <laughs> like my mind is changing all the time because when I'm in one dimension... I, I choose something and then when I go into the other dimension of myself, the opposite is my choice. So it's been kind of uh, funky <laughs> and quite the right to do that. I observe all of it and it's okay. It's okay because I've actually realized that the highest callings that I've been answering, I've become... I, how do you say, maybe stronger or louder or maybe more present even in my life. It's not just a calling to go explore this once, to go have this experience, to go have this expansion. No, right now the calling feels permanent, constant. It is beautiful, but I've realized that until now, actually until yesterday, I have not allowed myself to consciously choose this path, 
to consciously, with my whole being, my whole presence, dive into that, dive into the callings, dive into the being, dive into my energy that's been knocking on my door so much. To give you a concrete example, I've been feeling such a strong energy in my body, such a strong energy. And this energy really wants me to stop any distraction. It, this energy, my body, my whole self, I can feel it so much, wants me to stop looking at my, my phone all the time, wants me to stop planning all these things with the social life all the time, wants me to stop thinking about doing this or that all the time. My whole being is, has been asking me for a while to shut up, close my eyes and dive within for way longer than what I usually do every morning, for example. In my routine, I go on my cliff, I close my eyes, I connect with the elements, I connect with my essence, it's so beautiful, and then I stop myself. Why do I do that? Why do I fucking stop myself? When I can feel the pull of remaining cl eyes closed, no distraction, within me, why do I keep stopping myself? I guess it's multiple things I realized actually in the last couple of weeks uh, with everything happening and some experiences I had. Um, I think it's a habit, you know, the habit of being in the doing, even though I'm not a, such a doer as I was before living here in Bali and really uh, working on myself in that way, following my flow. But still, I think there's this strong habit of constantly thinking about doing something else or do even if it's my service and my um, truthful offerings to the world I'm constantly thinking about the next thing and when I don't it doesn't last long because I stop myself because of this habit it's like this bad circle of some sort and two weeks ago I had a deep um, inner journey work experience uh, with a facilitator here in Bali and she took us into this very, very deep self-journey to go and um, the theme was fear and courage. So she would take us, uh, it was very energetic, it was like a true transmission where we would use our voice to answer out loud some questions like self-inquiry questions she would ask. And in that doing so, um, I went and see actually very easily my deepest fear right now and the deeper fear I've been having and I actually know that but this was very very clear now to feel it during this session is the fear of losing myself you know when I did the buffo experience I died my ego died my ego is not just this part of me that is not the highest <laughs> my ego is my whole sense of identity it's the whole me that I've been knowing for 28 years it's my old sense of what is my life, my reality, the, my safety, basically, in the, in the world. What keeps everything kind of um, sensed to me, the ego me, the identity, the personality. So during Buffo, I died. This dissolved entirely. And I was nothing. I was everything. And when I came back... It's been already almost three months, but when I came back, that's what that was the hardest part for myself, my ego, to accept what happened, to accept that this is actually the reality. So I think I've been having before, uh, very unconsciously, of course, as probably many of us, and now it's been <laughs> coming, becoming very conscious, this fear of losing myself. And this applies in every area of my life, you know? The way I show up to people, the way people see me, the way people expect me to be. Actually, unconsciously even, I've completely made up, with the help of everyone around me, a certain image of myself. And now I've been finding myself in situations socially and personally where I'm so afraid to lose, this, to lose this created sense of self, this story, Sophie, that we all created together. I'm terrified of losing pieces of it because I am loved for it. I am appreciated for it. So this has been coming up a lot in my social life. Uh, I could see that I was making the wrong choices. Uh, for the wrong reason, at least, because it was 
all based on this fear of losing myself, not being safe, not being me anymore, not being liked anymore, not having all the resources anymore. I was choosing fear. Just like when I wasn't allowing myself to answer my deeper calling, which is simply to close my eyes and remain within myself for hours if it needs. But just stop distracting myself. Stop stopping myself. I was choosing fear because I was afraid in that um, transformed state of consciousness, in that modified state of consciousness. I was afraid to lose myself again. I was afraid to lose the sense of self, to dive too deep and to not be anymore. This is all choosing fear. I was choosing fear every step of the way. And the past week, I've been out of my house. I've been traveling mostly in the mountains because the mountains really helped me to actually tune into this deepest part and slow down, no distraction. Really go inward, feel it all. What does it have to say? And what it did say to me is that Yes, I've been choosing fear. It's okay. It's totally human. My ego, my sense of self, my whole personali personality was afraid to not be anymore. But this is just again a story, the story of fear. And today, I decided that from now on, I am choosing love over fear. I am choosing love, love for myself beyond and foremost love for myself in honoring my truest, highest self, love for myself in honoring the deepest callings of closing my eyes and staying there forever, if it needs, honoring myself and loving myself in not stopping myself from diving and losing the sense of self for a second and just become everything and nothing. Honoring and loving myself in making the highest choices for myself. Which means, maybe see less people, choose more wisely who I'm spending my time with and who I'm, yeah, uh, mixing my energies with. Being more conscious about my intentions in every moment. Being more conscious about the choice of coming back to my divinity and serve it as it is the path I have chosen, the path that chose me, the path of devotion for my divinity, for the whole divinity in each of us and serve it. So I'm choosing love over fear in every way. I'm not letting my, my fear stop me from being fully me, whatever that means. In every moment, I'm not letting the fear stop me from being so truthful with everyone around me. I'm not letting my fear stop me from receiving all the inspiration, all the beautiful inner journeys, projection of my consciousness in other realms, all the deepening, deepening, deepening of my soul here on earth. I am not letting my fear stop me from giving giving all the love, giving all the offers, all the service, all the generosity of my heart that I can give to others all around me. <sighs> so yeah, I'm choosing love. And three days ago, I had another CAP session, Kundalini Activation. I think it was my ninth time. And this session was absolutely wonderful. It really actually helped me get to the point that I am today talking to you and realizing and making all these conscious, beautiful choices to choose my sovereign divinity above all. And this capture session was beautiful in the way that I went in such a deep bliss state where, yeah, everything was just right, you know, when everything is just right. My whole energy was, of course, buzzing and being so beautifully merging with all, with one, with divine. And I was remaining in that state, observing the movements of this energy. 
And I could see that the movements were a dance between receiving the energy for myself, activating myself, my body, my being, and emanating this energy out, giving it out, being the transmission of this energy for the people around me. And that day I was actually uh, with one of my closest friends and she was going through a lot. It was a big release session for her, like very, very deep and huge and intense. And I could see that, wow, this energy at this moment was allowing me to be in this bliss state right next to her, going through so much and being able to hold that space for her, to help her a little bit more just with my presence and my allowance to transmit the energy. And so I was observing this beautiful dance and I didn't have any questions anymore. You know, for my mind, my ego, my thinking mind, it was almost... <laughs> how, how could I put it? It was almost a little bit sad because I didn't have the questions I've always had. <laughs> I didn't have like, oh, I need to know something. Oh my God, I'm discovering something. No, I didn't have that at this moment. I was just being. No more questions, just being fully present in my divine essence, connected to all, blissed out and completely, completely open to everything around me and observing this energy receiving and giving and it was just beautiful so I walked out of this session uh, completely activated since then my energy has been buzzing a lot and taking me into the deepest state meditation um, that I've ever had actually on just meditation it's so deep I go in these non-dual states and it just feels right again. It's just natural. I don't see like how is this gonna evolve in something or what is the activation per se. Like right now my mind doesn't make any sense of it or any stories about it. And I quite like it because it's exactly what I've been pushing away. This just being, stop thinking about whatever, about the next step, about why is this happening, about what can I do for this. Like, stop the thinking stuff and just be. And this is what I've been experiencing for the last couple of days. And uh, yeah, now I'm back home in the Luatu, in the ocean. And I'm just finding my way into this new way of living. Ever changing, ever evolving. But right now, this is what's present for me. This is this divine guidance divine path of myself that I chose to walk on this is the initiation that is for me right now and I have been guided so much so so much during this process of the last week and the last couple of days and yeah I can feel the presence a lot of Isis with me the divine goddess Really, you, the, all the signs she sent me, whether it's in form of oracle, of things online, of books, of messages, of visions. I keep having visions of her, of wings, of the Ankh cross. It's, it's like something that's now completely normal in my daily life, I guess, when I close my eyes or sometimes eyes open. And yeah, I can, I can see that she's kind of a mentor right now. I still don't know anything about her but I can feel her divine fierce love courage kindness and yeah her as a guide just like my whole being my every cell in my body is telling me to go for it to answer all these callings and to really really fear nothing because I am so held and everything is so perfect and I'm on the highest path right now. I know that. I can feel it. I can see it. It's very confirmed, let's say. And yeah, lately all the guidance I've been receiving is, it's okay. It's okay to lose myself. It's okay to dive deeper. 
it's okay to show up as this new evolution, evolved me. It's okay to be whatever it is that I am at any moment. And it's okay for this initiation to happen, whatever that means in the outside, if it means that I have to be a hermit for a few days, that I have to see less friends, that I have to be less social, less the me they know. It's okay. It's all okay. Because this is what is present right now and I'm choosing to honoring the present, honoring the divine and honoring myself. It's always a choice we have. What presence do you choose to embody? What presence do you choose to be? Who and what part of yourself do you choose to embody and be and show up as? Choosing your divine essence, your divine presence in every moment, which means your intentions, your energy, your actions guided intuitively. Choosing this divine presence of yourself and for yourself is an act of self-love. It's the, the great, greatest act of self-love you can have for yourself. It really is. Because you're allowing yourself, giving yourself the permission to be fully this magical you that you really are. To step fully into your power, your magic power. Your magic creative power. It's allowing yourself to feel this deep connection to all that is. To dive into your heart and let it cracked open by all that's happening in your life. Because no matter what happens, and last week I had to face loss, and the shock of what happened, um, losing those souls in our family, was so terrible. It was so intense. I haven't felt this sad in 20 years. And uh, yeah, you know what? During this, oh my God, so such deep and intense and profound sadness I felt my heart cracked open through the loss I could see the love and through this heartbreak my heart was breaking open open to the life open to the love open to all the beauty of life itself whether it's transformation through death whether it's joyful moments with a loved one whatever you are living in your life it has a magical beauty to it and whatever you are living you can choose your divine presence to go through it to embrace that situation to embrace your whole life because it's within that divine presence that i could turn sadness into gratitude loss into love I think I told you the most important parts <laughs> but yeah I guess uh, there were some keys in there that I wanted to transmit to you and if I could summarize it it's always this conscious choice are you going to be brave enough to choose love over your fear Are you going to be brave enough to choose you over anything? Are you going to be brave enough to be your divine self? To be devoted to you and to show up in the world when you're ready as just that, this shining love, this beautiful light offering yourself so easily to the world because You are so empowered in your sovereign divinity. So fill your cup first. And choose to love yourself in those magical ways. Whatever that means to you. Whether it's sitting for hours, eyes closed with no distraction and no stopping yourself. Or whether it's saying no to some people and fuck off to some others. You are so loved. You are so supported. We all are. 
the more you're going to listen inside the silence of your essence, the more you're going to hear the guidance, the divine callings. And to leave you with a magical note about the latest calling I've been uh, given, very soon I'm going to leave for India. Yes. <laughs> Finally. It's a, a land that's always been uh, calling, especially the last couple of years. And now, well, the guidance was extremely clear and... Uh, very soon in September, I'm going there for at least a couple months. Uh, I'm going to follow all the signs there, all the synchronicities. And I believe, yeah, experiment, uh, a great initiation. I am so open and I am so excited and so grateful for this life and all these magical experiences we get to have every time, every single day, every time we listen and answer. So yeah, this is all for now and uh, I will talk to you so soon. Thank you so much for listening and uh, don't hesitate to contact me on my Instagram, sophie.sonsflow or uh, anywhere else you can find me. Sending you so much love. Have a graceful, so beautiful day. <laughs>